Well, hello, everyone. It's just three minutes after one. People are still signing on, but I think we can begin. This is now being recorded. My name is John Collins, and I'm the executive director of the St. Pete Arts Alliance. Our mission is to advocate for all the arts to facilitate the growth of the arts community and drive arts related economic development that is inclusive and equitable in St. Petersburg. All of our programming has been affected by the pandemic and we can all see the economic devastation that COVID has done to our arts and cultural community countywide. Artists of all disciplines need help. We've partnered with our county's local arts agency, Creative Pinellas, on many things over the past several years. None, in my opinion, more important than raising funds for emergency arts relief and distributing those funds a couple of months ago. So now we are honored to present this workshop with the executive director of Creative Pinellas, Barbara St. Clair, and with Tabitha Cervantes, Grant Compliance Specialist. They are accepting and reviewing the applications to award our county's Pinellas CARES funding for the arts. So there is no one or two people better to guide you through the application process. I'll now turn it over to Barbara St. Clair. Hello everybody, thank you for coming. And John, thank you so much for hosting this. Um, John really put it wonderfully and I don't want to take time repeating what he had to say, but this is very important. And we are very committed to getting funds out to our artists and our arts businesses here in Pinellas County. I do wanna give a shout out to Pinellas County Administration and Board of County Commissioners. Um, we had some dialogue right around May, June about the uh, Pinellas CARES funds and could we really put together something where we could get it to artists and arts businesses who don't necessarily fall in the traditional style of a business that the county economic team might be used to dealing with. And um, they said yes, which it's pretty amazing. And I wanna give them a lot of credit for that. It has taken us a bit of time to figure out how to do it. It's a little bit complicated. That's kind of why we're here. Um, and we will take time with you today to really walk through and answer any questions. And we will also be available to um, help you along the way. Um, I want to share that when we looked at the number of artists and arts businesses in the county as best as we could estimate, um, and we worked with the county on how many funds were, what kind of funds were available, we believe that there is enough for everybody who is going to be eligible and who needs it. We can't say that for sure. But unlike the relief fund where we were limited by what we could raise, there is a good, um, a good uh, support of funds behind this grant. And so we're very optimistic. And I'm sharing that with you because I don't want people to worry that if they don't get their grant in right away, they're not gonna have access to the funds. We believe that, that we have enough. Um, so in a minute or two, I'm gonna turn it over to Tabitha. Um, I wanted to do two things. I wanted to share that we would like questions through chat and we will answer those questions. Um, we can take specific questions about what we're talking about um, during that time. And we will also have some time after for Q&A. Um, additionally, I wanted to find out if there's any burning questions that anybody has right now that if they, you won't be able to concentrate on what we're sharing with you unless we answer that question. And if you have a question like that, and I often do. <laughs> so that's why we're introducing it um, with this opportunity to ask the burning question before we dig in. Um, so uh, I'm looking for chat to light up. I'm not seeing that. Um, again, there will be time for questions and answers after, as well as, of course, if there's something specific, you can send a chat right away. And John's going to be helping us with that. Um, I am going to pass the microphone to Tabitha Cervantes. She and I have worked very closely on all the details of this grant. She's very expert and um, again, will be available to you as we go through this process. So Tabitha. Thank you so much. All right, everyone. I wanted to go ahead and say thank you for coming. This will be a very specific and informative session. I tend to get really excited when we get to help our arts community. So if you need me to repeat something or if you have a question, like Barbara said, please put it in the chat. I first wanted to illustrate this really great web page that we have on the Creative Pinellas website. You can find it at creativepinellas.org slash cares grants for artists. 
This is a great page for just some of the overview information. I actually see a question in the chat about the $4,250,000 required in revenue. So that's going to be sales before any expenses. Um, to answer your first question, thank you for that. Uh, to, to clarify what I'm saying there is this grant is now being is now available for artisan arts businesses who in 2019 made at least $4,250 in their revenues before their expenses. And those grant awards start at $1,000. Uh, you will be able to start here on the application. We have an apply now button. But the other part that I would like to highlight are who these grants are available for. So some of you might be art businesses, meaning that you file your taxes as a business and you're already registered with Florida SunBiz. So yes, you're eligible. Other people that can also access these funds are artists of all genres. So you're making your money from the creation, the sale, the performance, the practice of your art. But maybe in this, at this point, you're not established as a formal business. Yes, you're eligible, stay with us. We also have um, any artists who are working out of their home or any web-based businesses. Uh, again, it will, we'll get more into this, but that address does need to be in Pinellas County. And then lastly, of course, the Trout and True bricks and mortar art businesses are also eligible uh, with this grant. Um, and the other portion here is if you're ready, once you're ready, you can find the application portal here because it's one application portal for all the programs under the CARES funding in Pinellas County. But in, up in the upper right corner, we also have a help page. And this page is really great if you wanna pull it up right next to your application. This is a step-by-step -step process of how to fill out the application. So basically, this is exactly what we're doing today. So don't feel like you have to write down a bunch of notes. You'll find everything that you need also on this site. So this one is creativepanelist.org, arts cares grant help. So good, good pages to bookmark. So going back to this page, once you click the apply now button, you'll be brought to the county page to sign in or register to the neighborly portal, which is where all the applications will start. Most of you won't have an application at this point or an account, so you have to register. It's quite simple and brief and a quick process. You're gonna put in your email address, uh, create a password, verify that per password and hit continue. You'll be asked to verify your email and then asked to be to log in with all of your newly created credentials, which then bring you to a page like this. This is the welcome screen for the portal with some information on the different options. You don't really have to engage with too much on this page. You're gonna scroll down to the bottom and click here to start a new application. And with that being said, we're gonna just jump into it. And again, please ask any questions. There's, there's not a question that is too small for us on our docket today. The first thing that you're going to see is the program interview overview and the eligibility overview. Uh, I'm not going to read this to you, but it gives you a, a, some good sources of information. And once you read through it, all you have to do is click complete and continue to start that application process. The first stage of the application that you're gonna be engaging with are some eligibility items. And you're gonna see two lists to start off with. The first being a general business sector. When you click this down arrow for this list, you'll see a couple different options. And now these business categories are the way that Pinellas County and the United States just categorize the different businesses in our economy. And so as an arts business or an artist, there's only gonna be a few that you're gonna to have to worry about because you only fall under certain ones. So that's going to be retail trade for our art galleries. It's also going to be for our independent artists, you're gonna be falling under artists, performers, museums, and spectators. And then um, you're also, we, 
some people in our community will fall under this education tab for uh, fine art schools, as an example. So let's just go with this example for our independent artists. The next list that you're gonna have to make a selection on is the business type. And you'll notice these numbers right here. They will help you pick the next option for this list. So that says 711, so you're going to scroll down. And there's some options that might follow uh, more closely to what you're doing, but for the purpose of this example, we can just select the 71151 code, independent artists, writers, and performers. And then moving forward, there's a couple of items on the eligibility stage that you'll have to attest to. The first one being that your business suffered from interruption caused by the closures on March 1st, resulting from the COVID pandemic. That your business suffered economic damages due to this interruption that would exceed the grant award. So remember those grant awards start at $1,000. Um, and that, uh, that aren't covered by insurances or reimbursement. We can get more into that later. Uh, we also, again, going back to one of the uh, critical initial eligibility criteria is that your business in 2019 was uh, generating $4,250, but no more than $3 million. Uh, don't, okay. So then you're just going to input what that exact amount is here. That would be generated from one of your tax forms, which we'll get into, uh, that your address is physically loaded, located in Pinellas County. You were established prior to October 1st. You're in operation of Feb as of February 29th, and uh, that you will be fully operational after local and state emergency guidelines are rolled back. And that you're not a publicly traded company or a nonprofit and that you have no outstanding liens or fees with the county and that there are no felonies within the last two years. That was more of the diplomatic stuff and you just hit complete and continue moving on to the next section. So everyone here has already engaged with the W-9 form. It's a, a big part of the way that we engage with our taxes. But the way that they've built it out in this system is that you just input the fields directly into the portal. You're not going to be uploading a W-9 document, in other words. So for the independent artist, you would be writing your name. But this should also be the name of the business owner. If you have an arts business, you would simply write it here. If you're an independent artist and you don't operate under any other name, then you would just leave this section blank. Most of you will fall under this section for the business type, and this is uh, in regards to how you file your taxes. So an individual tax form or the sole proprietor or a single member LLC. This is really, really important and will help streamline the review of your application. But when you input your address, you're going to want to make sure that this is a good address for you because uh, if awarded, you will be given that grant award mailed via check to this address. And this should also match your 2019 tax return. Again, and you want to be in Pinellas County with all the correct zip codes. The next portion of the W-9 is also known as the taxpayer identification number. So what that means is for the independent artist, you're going to be inputting your social security number because that's the number associated with all your tax documentation. And then for arts businesses, you, if you're registered in that format, you already know that you have an EIN number. So you would, this would be standing in place of a social security number because it's linked to your business and that's what would be of value for this application. But if you're an artist, social security works just fine. And then after you engage with those areas, we have some certifications. And I wanted to walk through these because the language is uh, 
a little intense, but when you pick them apart a little bit, you'll really see that they're just pretty straightforward. Uh, so we just want to verify that that taxpayer identification number is correct, so that you put your social security number in correctly or your EIN number. You want to select that you are not subject to backup withholding. Um, traditionally, you're going to know this uh, already. You, most people are not subject to backup withholding, and if you were, you would have probably been notified by the IRS or um, there was an issue with your taxpayer uh, identification number not matching their files. So you can confidently just select this because you would know if this was an issue otherwise. Uh, if you need more information on that, uh, there's a lot of resources uh, and we'd be happy to connect you with those if you have more questions and that you are a US citizen. They're gonna ask you for your signature and then you're gonna hit complete and continue. Uh, a small housekeeping step, I do recommend hitting save throughout the, the process and if you need to come back uh, you can always start where you left off. But for this purpose, we're gonna get, hit complete and continue and move forward. I'm gonna put in a dummy here. My dog might bark in the workshop. She's really excited to get these funds into the community. All right. That brings us to the next stage, which is just some general information. Here we're gonna be putting in our, our business address again, you know, to uh, create consistency and make sure that there's uh, multiple points to verify your information. Again, this should be matching the W-9 in your tax form. This is another area that is really, really going to be helpful for that review process of the application. Um, make sure that you put in a good uh, website URL that can illustrate what you're doing as an artist or what you're doing as an arts business. I'm just going to put in a test. And your first name and last name, again, this is really helpful if you're using consistent um, names. So the names on your tax form should be here when you can um, demonstrate that as well. The phone, the email. Here you did attest that you started your business before Corona, um, before the pandemic started. And they're gonna ask you for that date that you established, whether that's your business or your artist uh, career. And this here is a breakdown of the different programs for the CARES. You guys will be falling under the Arts Micro Grant, where you can find a little bit more information there. But in this drop down selection, you have a couple options depending on the documentation that you have available. So, for businesses that are registered with SunBiz, and if you, you would know that you're registered with SunBiz because it will be prevalent in your mind, and you file your taxes as a business, you should go ahead and select the sliding scale because you have the appropriate documentation and you'll be able to be processed right alongside with the other businesses that will qualify for this overarching one, the local business grants. For arts businesses who maybe aren't as formally established with that SunBiz registration, for instance, or with artists who don't have um, a SunBiz because you're, you don't classify as a business yet and you're just a independent artist, you would want to select the Arts Micro Grant. Uh, we're going to show you more specifically what follows falls underneath that uh, documentation on which is which. But in general, if you don't have a SunBiz registration, you're going to be wanting to select the Arts Micro Grant. If not, uh, if you do have that SunBiz, you would want to do the sliding scale. Thanks everyone for sticking in with me. Uh, the other items in the general information tab are some optional demographic information that you could uh, uh, fill out if you feel so inclined. I'm just going to select save and move on to the next portion of the application. So uh, to reiterate, the, these funds are for uh, businesses arts businesses and art artists in this case who were impacted by COVID and are in need of financial relief. So the uh, county wants to know how 
yes or no, are you attesting to how these grants will be used if awarded? So, we utilize the awarded grant to help with your payroll and wages. This includes paying yourself for those artists uh, listening in. So that most likely will be a yes. Will you utilize the awarded grant to help with mortgage or rent? Yes or no. Will you utilize the awarded grant to help with payments to one or more vendors? Yes or no. And will you utilize the awarded grant for health and safety purchases? Yes or no. Uh, this one is really targeted for a specific program. Uh, don't feel like you have to say yes to all of these items. Uh, we're looking for a, a truthful representation. Uh, and again, it is an attestation. So uh, while it's good to have all of this documented of how you're using your funds, we're not necessarily going to be knocking on your door uh, come the, the grant award and asking for all of your receipts. But word to the wise, keep all your receipts. <laughs> Um, and then, will you be utilizing this award for other needs? Yes or no? Uh, this is, again, just for informational purposes. Totally feel free to uh, hit that section with uh, not applicable. And then, as you can see, we've walked through most of the application at this point, and it's been relatively straightforward. All of this information you guys can pull quite easily. The area that we're want to spend uh, some more time on and it's a little bit more precise, a little bit more formal is the required documentation. And uh, there's a couple different options and I'm going to pass the mic to you, Barbara, who is also an expert in this field. Uh, Barbara, you're on mute. Yeah. It's, it's not so much that I'm an expert, but I have spent a lot of time with the county and um, uh, the teams behind this because this is where we think that artists may have the most difficult time. Um, so there's sort of two, two major approaches and, and Tabitha, if you would scroll down to the business financials number two first. Yes. Um, in order to qualify for this grant, you have had to pay federal income tax. Ideally, you would have paid federal income tax in 2019 and if not, you paid it in 2018 and can uh, show that you have requested an extension. Um, it's federal tax dollars that are being used for this. And so it's just sort of built right into the program that um, you are eligible if you paid federal taxes. So where we spent a lot of time with the county trying to puzzle through how to do this is we understand that a lot of artists um, only use their personal income tax and uh, perhaps uh, include on that income tax where it says, um, you know, other income, which is sort of line seven on the 1040 and you write in what you what you earned as an artist. Um, we also know, for example, that some artists submit their income tax um, filing jointly with their spouse and it might be under their spouse's name and their spouse's social security. And um, we, so we looked into all of that and we have some methods uh, to account for that and to document that. And so however you file your, your federal income tax, that's what we're gonna work with for you. Obviously, if you file a Schedule C, which is a business income tax form, then that makes it much easier because you fit more typically into, you look more like a business to the, to the county government. But, if you file individually, you still look like an arts business to us and we will help make it happen. Um, so that piece of the puzzle um, is pretty straightforward. And uh, go ahead and file what you have, um, but you must file a personal income tax in order to be eligible for this grant. The second piece of it is um, essentially proving that you have legal operations. For many businesses that the County Economic Development Department deals with, it's very easy for them to prove that they're operating as a business. They have their business tax receipts, or they have a license that, you know, they're a physician or they're a dentist or, or whatever, or they've registered with Florida SunBiz um, Division of Corporations, and they can show a certificate, a, a screenshot of their registration with SunBiz as an active business. We know that a lot of artists don't have that. And so we uh, spent a bit of time with the county saying what your question is, is, is 
not really do you have a registration with Florida SunBiz, but can you prove that you're operating as a business and you've made that $4,250 in 2019? Well, it's on your taxes, you have one piece of it. And if we can uh, find other ways to document that you've been making money by the practice, the creation, the performance, the sale of your art, um, then we can make the case to prove legal operation. So when you get down to, when you get to this page, and Tabitha, if you would scroll down, it's going to say um, upload file proof of legal operation, but you will not have any of those, you may not have any of those three documents. Don't worry about it. We will come back around and, and, and find alternative means with you to collect documentation that shows that you've been making money as an artist. Um, you don't need to worry about documentation of eligible expenses for, for health and safety because that's a different grant than the ARC micro grants. Um, and uh, you, unless you're having someone help you with the application, you don't have to worry about additional documents. So if you don't have a Florida SunBiz registration, all you need to do is click on the business financials, which is the second bullet and upload your tax file. Um, then you're done with this page. And uh, you will go to the applicant certification page in which Tabitha is going to very, very dynamically tell you what to do with this page, no matter what. Yes, thank you so much, Barbara. That was really helpful to spell that out for that required documentation. Uh, the final drum roll. A uh, portion of this, uh, this application is that applicant certification. So you would come in and certify that everything is correct and accurate to the best of your ability with your name and your signature. And I really want to stress, and maybe stress isn't the right word, encourage you to hit this complete and submit button because by submitting your application, if you do need that additional documentation to prove um, that operation as Barbara was talking about, we need you to get this application in so that you can get routed to us and so that we can help you make this application as clean, as clear, and as strong um, to uh, receive any of this funding. Uh, you may be asking what would be the next step after you submit this, because I keep referencing, we have to help build your case in some instances for instance, if you don't have those business taxes, uh, you can expect an email from me. It will be coming from Neighborly, but um, once you click on it, you'll see that it's from Tabitha Cervantes. And I will be giving you all of the information you need. Uh, I'll be giving you a quick, easy link to uh, finish the rest of the application. And then we do all of the back end work and we make sure your application is ready to go and we push it through to the review process. So uh, just for repetition's sake, if you do have the documentation that, as Barbara put it, looks like a business to the county, you'll be processed quite uh, quickly through their, through their review process. And then if you need that additional documentation, you can uh, be on the lookout for me, everyone. Check your emails, check your spam, uh, and then we'll, we'll continue the process from there and make sure you guys have some strong applications. And that concludes this riveting step-by-step -step process. Uh, we'll be taking all of the questions. So please let us know what you're thinking, how you're feeling. Tabitha and Barbara, I do see a question. Uh, what if you are a dancer or a musician and you do not have a website? What should you put in that box? Um, you can put in Facebook or um... Instagram, what it is, is, is part of the storytelling about who you are and what you do. Um, obviously, there are some um, milestones to hit and some things to provide, but we really want everybody to be successful and, and have access to these funds. We don't want something like you don't have a website to be a barrier. Um, and the, the good thing about the way this is working is, so it's really a two part process. If everything, you know, if it looks like a duck, how, how I've been putting this, to, this out to people is it's the same application if you're a dry cleaner as if you're an artist. 
So if you look like if you look the same as a dry cleaner from your accounting and your financials and stuff, it'll go right through. If it looks like, well, this is different. They don't have a website. They have a Facebook. They will send it to Creative Pinellas. As Tabitha said, you'll get an email from her. We will say, hey, um, we need to have a dialogue with you, or we need you to send us send us some pictures of you dancing. You know, whatever it is that we can start to. Um, add essentially add material to your file that concretizes for the reviewers what you do so um, you'll have to to work a little bit harder with us if you don't look like a dry cleaner but the end result is that we'll be able to get you your funds and that's really what the big key was um, how to how to make sure that artists would be able to get this money um, even if they look like artists, or especially if they look like artists. And if that didn't help, tell me, ask me again, because I can, I can go back to try to explain it another time. Well, another question we have is, is income from teaching included in that 4,000 plus? So would that be teaching, let's say, at the Morian Art Center, or would it be teaching at public school, or would it be teaching privately? It really depends on what that teaching is. Um, and um, but be, we believe it will because uh, education is included in um, one of the categories that is an acceptable category. Next question is going back to perhaps dancers, musicians would apply as well as some other performing arts actors. Um, my dancers who are applying were trained in St. Petersburg and are professional dancers living here until their companies are reopened? Are they eligible? Do they have a Pinellas County address? And would it matter, I'm asking this question there though, would their tax returns have to have that Pinellas County address? Wow. I haven't, I haven't run across that question. I, I, I'm, I don't know. I think if they can, We'll have to we'll have to work with we'll have to research that, but I think um, if they're resident, I guess it would depend on the timing. If they are resident in Pinellas County uh, at the end of last year and during the time, especially during the time you know January, February, March, would probably be able to at least uh, attempt to make that happen. Oh, there's a few more here in the chat. Um, what if you are part of a band, but just applying for yourself and not the whole band? You can do both. The band can apply because the band will have, you know, one level of income. And then as an individual performer, you can apply. Uh, this performer is asking, so all I need as an individual artist, not an LLC. Is my 2019 tax return including Schedule C? If you have a Schedule C, that's ideal. Perfect. And then, um, if you are not, if you are not an official business registered with SunBiz, you, so you're using your Social Security number, you don't have an EIN. We would be looking for some documentation that shows that you made, that you actually performed as a musician in Pinellas County. So. Mm -hmm. uh, Payments from you know whoever hired you a contract, uh, pick, uh, you know uh, newspaper stuff saying go see see so and so at, at the castaway on this night, something that we can start to make a case that you um, made your living as, as a performer during that time frame. And there's uh, uh, if we get to that point, we'll send you a list of things that we think might work. And we'll also be open if you say, well, I don't have that, but I have something else. We'll work with you on that too. All uh, right. Another one is when you say paid taxes in 2019, do you mean filed taxes? We didn't make a net profit in 2019, so we filed, but we didn't owe anything. So um, you have had to make in gross sales for, at your art $4,250. I can't say 
partly because I'm not looking at your taxes and also I'm, I'm really, I have no accounting knowledge for taxes. So I don't know what that would mean in terms of you paying taxes or not, but you need to be able to establish that you made at least $4,250 in 2019 for farming or creating or selling or practicing as an artist. Would income from working as a gallery assistant and virtual reality technician at the Dolly Museum count? As in uh, I think that would depend on whether you were in it as a contractor. Um, and as in that particular case, it would be really easy if you have your own, like let's say if you have a consulting business or not. But if you're going in under your name, we would have to really look at it in detail and see what the story is. I would certainly encourage you to apply. That's an interesting one. If we are an S Corp in Florida, do we have to register with SunBiz or are we automatically registered? Ooh, um, <laughs> that is, that is a, a legal and an accounting question. I would suggest you are not automatically registered with SunBiz. But if you could look at, you know, um, they, you have to send a, give an annual report to SunBiz every year and you have to pay them every year. Yes. So if you have not paid them, yes. then you are not registered with them. But, you know, um, as an S Corp, I don't know, you, you, you may have somebody on your team who's taking care of that for you. I would agree with that. We have to pay a renewal fee every year, no matter what type of corporation you are, nonprofit, S Corps or C Corp to be registered. Um, would income from grants, but no art sales count? I think it would depend on what kind of grant it is. Mm -hmm. For example, Creative Pinellas has a mural grant and it's really for the production of a product. Um, so I would go ahead and, uh, you know, we could certainly take it offline, but I think it, to fill out that first part of the application is pretty, that Tabitha went over is fairly quick. And I would just go ahead and, and um, get that process started. We have a question that you may have covered and I'm saying you may have missed it, where you pick the eligible business type. It does not have a performance selection available. It does. Right, Tabitha, do I was you want gonna to... say, I thought it did. Yeah, it does. Um, we, we would consider independent artists, so, and it says performers as an independent artist, I believe. Yes. Tabitha, if you wanna pull it up and we can share the screen again and look. All right. So uh, right now we have selected the general as artists, performers, museums, and then the smaller specific category as independent artists, writers, and performers. And that just answered another question that writers are also eligible. Yes. I'm scrolling. I don't think I'm missing any more. Tabitha may see something I have, but I think that's all the questions. Yeah, I'm not seeing any ones you didn't grab, John. Well, on that note, I'd say you've solved all of our problems. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> At least the ones that are in this box, right? <laughs> <laughs> <Isn't that> right? <laughs> Um, thank you so much for going through this and being a part of this. It is being recorded for all those who are on here, so we can make that available as soon as Zoom makes it available to us, and we'll email it out to everyone who registered, whether they attended or not. Um, I believe there will be one or two other times that this is going to be repeated in various places, so stay tuned. And as Barbara and Tabitha said, I encourage you to email them with your questions. Yes. And I thank you all for attending. Yes, thank you. And um, just sort of to highlight, we really want to get this money out to you. It's been our mission for quite some time on this. So see us as your allies and your advocates.
And uh, just to circle the, the loop on that, uh, a great email to reach us at is cares at creativepinellas.org. And uh, we really look forward to facilitating this process with you guys. Thanks so much. I just took a screenshot for posterity. And with that, I will say goodbye. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.